Revolutionary Green. Um, coming back at you today on a hot, nice, raw Sunday. Um, just wanted to make this video, but first of all, like I always do, let me give thanks to the ancestors, the resources, the creator, uh, for letting me see a beautiful, blessed day, and to, and, and especially to the ancestors to, uh, work through me to give you this information, uh, about one of our great iconic leaders that's rarely talked about, um, when it comes to, um, new African leadership in America. Um, he's never really been out there like that. There's not much info on him. And I'm gonna make this video just to put it out there so we can start incorporating him in the uh, uh, in the conversation of great leadership because he was that he was the epitome of that. Um, he was one of the greats that came to the picture when the great Marcus Garvey was captured by the USG government and, and deported. Um, Carlos A. Cook, um, remember that name? Um, a great black man who came into the scene. When, when, when it was looking kind of bad, when New Africans, um, in the UNIA lost their leader, Marcus Garvey, to the crookedness of this, um, USB government, and, um, they tried to fold the organization, but this man came into the scene and kept the organization moving in the direction that it needed to be going in. And, um, I'm gonna dedicate this video to the ancestors of the comrade, uh, my hero, your hero, um, Carlos A. Cook, um, Black Nationalist, the ideological son of Marcus Garvey. He was that bridge from Marcus Garvey to Malcolm X. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm, I'm gonna dedicate this to him, um, so we can get more information out there on him. Um, I'm gonna start off by using one of his quotes that he said, and I think this quote defined him at, at the highest level. Um, it defined his character, his nature, um, his humanity. And and, 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 the, and the quote goes something like this. this. This is what Carlos A. Cook said. He said, the culture of a people is best manifested by the homage they pay to those who led with dedication and devotion to freedom and cause. I mean, like, that sums up a lot of our great leaders, women and men. But it most definitely defined this man's character, nature, and, and what he stood for when he was on earth, Carlos A. Cook, um, I mean, that quote sums him up. Um, a black New African nationalist, man, um, somebody that Marcus Garvey, uh, took under his wing and, 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 and gave him leadership, and he took that leadership, and he lived by it, man. He lived for uh, helping the people. And, and, and uplifting the people. Um, uh, Carlos A. Cook, um, I want to talk about why he's not talked about. Well, he's not talked about because the European media at that time, you know, they were not trying to show or promote or advertise positive leadership or positive images of a, of, of a black person or a new African person in America at that time. So they wasn't even looking for another, what J. Edgar Hoover quotes, a black messiah, a leadership um, person who was stepping up to the forefront. So you knew they wasn't going to mention him. And many of the black outlets wasn't mentioning him either. So um, I'm not going to say it's the black media or the black leadership at that time fought for not putting more of him out there but it was really due to this man's greatness and his, his principles his loyalty his morals man he kept the great sacred oath man and what's the great sacred oath not to publicize himself or gain fame or glorification or money or anything on that level he kept the oath of secrecy, man. He, he caught the, he, he kept the principles of, of being a servant to the people. Like the, like, like, my, like the comrade yourself, Archie Shakur said, man, uh, a servant to the people. And this is what Carlos A. Cook was. He was a, he was a, a loyal servant of the people. He let his work be, strapped them boots up, got in them streets, and that speaks for itself. Uh, 
that's why we don't know much about what he did in that time period between Marcus Garvey the portion and, and the time of Malcolm X arrived because he he was loyal to the work, man. So we gotta respect that. Lord history on college that cook. He was born in the Dominican Republic and he was a Dominican. Um black, you know what I mean? Um him and his family left the Republic of um Dominican and moved to Harlem. And when he got to Harlem, he was raised in Harlem. He seen that the conditions, the ills, the turn of black people was not that different from what was going on where he came from. Actually, it was on the same levels, the empowerment of black people. Um, when he seen that, as he grew older and, you know, gained knowledge of self, you know, um, got under Marcus Garvey, got with Marcus Garvey, joined the UNIA. Um, when he got in the UNIA, he started immediately his dedication to the Black Liberation Front and, and putting in that work, which Garvey rewarded him by being the administrator of the um the advanced division of the UNIA. So you see immediately Marcus Garvey seen the leadership in Carlos A. Cook. So he gave him a leadership role in the organization. Um many people don't realize, man, even though Marcus Garvey was the face of the UNIA, he had a lot of collective help. The UNIA was moving as a collective, man. They wasn't on no rank levels, man. You know, even though everybody had a position, they had to play the position. But it wasn't on no bottom to top like level or no top to bottom level or bottom to the top. It was collective dialectic and movement, man. Uh, wherever you was good at, that's where you was put at. And, and you, you put in your work. Um, and Carlos A. Cook put in that work. Um, I want to talk about the period. When um, he came into the picture, he came in the picture of the period when Marcus Garvey was captured by the USG, United States government, reactionary law enforcement agency. Um, and when they deported him back to where he came from, um, Carlos A. Cook instantly stepped onto the scene, instantly took the leadership role, and instantly started his his. his dedication to the Liberation Front and, and one of his first things he done was keep Marcus Garvey's name from being dehumanized and demonized by European oppressors and the, and the USG government and, and the reactionary forces. He kept his name, name legacy on the positive side of the coin and not the negative side of the coin but in the positive light but not the dark light. He, he kept and as you see today Marcus Garvey is on the iconic role role leadership that we admire that every revolutionary organization is striving to reincarnate and get back to and and that's Marcus Garvey man the, the father the real MMG man um father the RBG um I mean he fought psychologically physically to keep God Garvey's name out of negative minds remember that he don't want that created what we known as today is August seventeenth, which is um Garvey Day, Garvey's holiday. Carlos A. Cook created that, man. He's the originator of that. Um he knew that the USG government wasn't gonna give this man a holiday, just like they don't get, give none of the real leaders no holiday. Um, like Michael Mex still don't have a holiday. But he they have holidays to us because of people like Carlos A. Cook they made sure of that, and he made sure that August 17th, Marcus Garvey's birthday, Earth Day, was made a black holiday amongst two African people in America. And we, and we just celebrated that day. His birthday just passed, man. Thanks to Carlos A. Cook, that, he, that that day is an official, honorable day for Marcus Garvey, man, and his legacy. Um, what else Carlos A. Cook was about? In principle, he kept economics at the forefront, which Garvey was about, you know, what we saw what Garvey Greatness did with economics, man, because they knew economics is, uh, is what's going to get us to where we got to get to, it's going to get us to our goals, man, um, um, black economics is, is why we're unemployed in the positions that we are in to this day, 
because let me say this call up a Quran statement by black so when you hear people say by black Carlos, was, Carlos A. Cook was the first man to utter those words and put that quote into the forefront and make sure that black people honor that quote, man, and try to get black people to buy black. Because he knew if he buy black, um, we can raise the impoverishment level, raise the stuff out of that. We can, we can, um, employ our own kind, employ black people, and push the foreigners out. Because look what the foreigners do, man. The foreigners come in your community. They set up their businesses, get paid, send their money across the or raise banks in their banks and take care of their own people. See, them foreigners are taking care of their own people. It's not in the United States of America. They're taking care of family members back in the country they come from now. That's where them, that's where your money's going. So think about it. If we build businesses, uh, buy black, um, Raise our economic level. Um, we can build and establish what we're trying to get to, and that's self-dependency, control our own destiny, um, um, and pull our own kind, man. Um, we gotta. That's one of the main things we gotta get done, man. If we don't get that done, as far as the economic area, man, like like Malcolm said, man, we're gonna be another 50 years still marching. And still stuck in the same standstill because we're not putting enough effort towards black economics, man. Black economics must be fixed, man. In order for us to to even get out of where we at, so we can get our people from going to the welfare line and food stamps, checks, man. All that can be eliminated if we build black businesses, like Carlos say Cook told us back then, to buy black. We can fix a lot of our problems, man. And poverty being the number one. Um, we were one of the first people to build a, a, a African nationalist organization, which was, you know, um, which was the, um, the African nationalist pioneer movement. Malcolm X was influenced off this movement. Um, and you can see he took some of that incorporated in his own nationalist movement, which was the ONAU. Um, um, under this African National Pioneer Movement, Carlos A. Cook recognized nationality as important, which is Carlos A. Cook was the first person to separate the terms black, Negro, and African, man. For one, he knew black, you know, I mean, it's, it's logical. Black is not a nationality, it's not a race. So we had to, we had to eliminate that, you know, make that understood. Black is not a uh, a nationality. It's a color. It's not a you know. It's not a race. Uh, Negro. What is a Negro? It's just a Spanish word for black. So you're still talking about color. So he knew that word wasn't no good. So he had to X that word. With European Americans took that word and, and really just used it in an oppressive way to define like Uncle Tom's uh, collaborators. Because that's what I think of when I hear the word Negro. I hear a uh, collaborator, Tom's, man. So he knew that word wasn't no good because it still defines you as a color. Um, African was the best logical term, which we took and incorporated and brought forth new African as a nationality because it's a nationality. You know what I mean? We are African. We are African people. And it's not just because of skin color. It's because of culture, politics, economics, Mentalism, mental, you know what I mean? African consciousness makes you an African, man. Huh? And spirit is African, and he knew that. So that's why he started using the word African as a nationality, man, huh? and made sure it was a nationality. He wrapped that red, black, and green. He was loyal to that red, black, and green flag. He kept it home 365 days, 24 um, 7, um, hours a day. He kept that flag up, man. He never kept it half down. He kept it high, diluted. He, he, he wrecked that. Um, he was the one to advocate the uh, national arms resistance movement. He was an uh, important figure in that. He 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 he, he preached self defense. He preached retaliation because he seen what the what our people in the south was going through: tyranny, murder, hunger, trees. He made sure. 
uh, to incorporate self-defense from the great Robin F. Williams. He made sure, like, if, if these cats going to keep shooting down our people, we must retaliate as a month. And he was the first person to coin that statement of retaliation, man. We must use retaliation at all costs. When we lose one of our brothers and sisters, they got to lose one of theirs. Defend yourself at all costs. Um, he was, a, I know you remember Marcus Garza movement. I mean, I ain't not Marcus Garza movie, Malcolm X movie. I know you remember the scenes in Malcolm X movie where it was black leaders, preachers, and all those types that was speaking from the step ladder and giving speeches from the ladder. Um, when Malcolm X was speaking from the ladder and everybody was getting their points across, their science, their knowledge, um, to uplift black people, Carlos A. Cook was the first person in Harlem to do the step ladder speech. He was the first person that brought that ladder out there and laced some boots up and got out there and kicked that sign, man. He was a servant of the people, man. And he was the first person to incorporate the stout ladder speech. So that's where Malcolm X and them got that from. Um, he helped Africans in the Southwest Africa and Angola when they were going through their civil wars, man. He, 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 he founded the, uh, the, the Universal African Relief Program. To send medical supplies over there to those people to get those Africans help and, and victims of, and casualties of the civil war that was going over in Angola. He was the person, was one of the first people to reach out and go over to Africa and help these people who were going through a uh, turmoil period. Carlos A. Cook, don't forget that. He was the first person to start the recognition of naturalness, natural Africanness, getting back to that natural state of being in appearance and spiritually like he created um the the uh the racial pride for with natural look and natural pride um when he created the standard of beauty contest um to promote natural beauty amongst women to wear natural hair man he, he started this in a contest that he created which later on european americans came and created and copied and made the miss america pageant you know, how funny is that? They got that from Carlos A. Cook, man. Every time you see Miss America, think of Carlos A. Cook, man. He was the first person on that, man. He started that. Um, I mean, this man pioneered a lot of things that we are not talking about. Um, and I just wanted to dedicate this video to Carlos A. Cook to put his name back out there and for him to be recognized and start him up in the conversations that need to be talked about, man. Because this was a great hero of mine, great hero, hero of yours. He was an iconic figure of new African people and African people in America and across the globe. Carlos A. Cook, revolutionary black nationalist, a revolutionary, one of the first revolutionary new African nationalists, man. And, and, and go out and get his book, Carlos Cook and the Black Nationalism um, from Garvey to Malcolm X because he was the bridge in the middle um, from Garvey to Malcolm X, you know, Carlos A. Cook. He was that bridge in the middle of the leadership. And we got to salute this man and put this man on and get more information on this man. Um, for our youth and all that. And also, man, he was the first person, man, to start the African Center Education School. Carlos A. Cook originated that, man. He started that in Harlem. He had African schools in Harlem teaching Thai, Swahili, and African history. And now European watered down history of, of New African history and African history period. Carlos A. Cook had the first African center school in Harlem, right? Kaswahili, all that, uh, teaching original languages, African languages, man. Right? He put that out there. He started teaching that. Um, so we gotta give him his credit, his credit too, man. Right? Carlos A. Cook, straight warrior, serving other people. Rest in peace. I say, I'm going to sign off right here, man. Carlos A. Cook, the legacy of this great man, man. The not talked about man. And, and let's, let's, let's bring him into the conversations, man. One of the first black nationalists, new African nationalists. Um, um, we salute you, man. Your, your spirit will live on through the righteousness. Power to the people who don't feel freedom. Let's get free. Signing off.